Vertebroplasty is a minimally invasive procedure that's used to treat patients suffering from pain, usually related to spinal fractures resulting from osteoporosis. These fractures are very common. They occur in elderly women, typically, and uh, happen with almost no injury. Simply bending over uh, to tie shoes can cause these fractures. They're very common in the U.S., up to 700,000 patients a year suffer these fractures. Before vertebroplasty, there were no good options for the patient, bed rest strong medicine, bracing. None of these were very satisfactory. And vertebroplasty was developed uh, initially in France in the 1980s to treat tumors of the spine. In the 1990s, uh, Lee Jensen at University of Virginia developed it for osteoporotic fractures. And it, it simply is the injection through a needle, through the skin, of medical cement into the fracture. It's done typically on an outpatient basis. Patients are put on a table, <coughs> excuse me, with a some sedation in their vein, and uh, their back is cleaned off, the needle's put in, the cement is, is injected under x-ray guidance um, to fill the fracture, and the needle's taken out. Patients recover and go home. Many people say that we're stabilizing fractures. The fact is we don't know exactly how it works. There are theories. Stabilization of fractures is the most common theory. Another theory is that the cement, which gets very hot when it hardens, numbs or kills the, uh, the nerves causing the pain. The point is, we don't know how it works. There have been some studies in cadavers showing that the bone is uh, stiffened after the cement is put in, but that's hard to apply to people. We've done very little testing to show that we're stabilizing it. Uh, there are some other uh, factors that, that make me at least wonder what, how much stabilization we're doing. That is to say, we've looked at large series of patients here at Mayo to see whether it matters how much cement you put in, and we found that it doesn't really matter how much cement you put in patients tend to get pain, pain relief. So you would think that if we're stabilizing fractures, more cement would offer more stabilization and thus more pain relief, but we can't find that effect. Secondly, it seems not to matter how much experience the operator has when he does it. Even novices show excellent results. The technique of using one needle or two, filling the whole, bottle, whole bone or half, doesn't seem to matter. So there are factors here that, that made me question what the true treatment effect was. Was it the cement stabilizing fractures? Was it the cement heating the nerves? Or was it something else? This current study was funded by the NIH. It was an international trial. Uh, and the point of the study was to determine whether the cement itself was the real agent in allowing these patients to achieve the obvious benefit from the procedure. So what we did was we did something called a randomized controlled trial which is felt to be the best way to study the effect of a medication or an intervention. So we took patients and, of course, consented them and told them about the study beforehand. We brought them to the procedure room. We did everything as we normally would do up to a point. The patient was put on a table, on, usually on, on their belly or their side. Uh, medication was given by vein to sedate them and get rid of pain. Their back was cleaned off for, with a surgical scrub. And then Novocaine was put under the skin and on the bone, as we normally would do, before putting the larger needle in for the cement. At that point, before putting the large needle in, we, quote, randomized the patient. That is to say, we opened the envelope to tell us whether they were going to get the full vertebroplasty, or what we call the control intervention. If the patient was putting the full vertebroplasty, they got the needle put in and the cement put in. If they were randomized to the control intervention, we did not put the needle in, and we did not put the cement in. We simply pressed on their back and opened the cement in the room, as a very strong odor, to simulate the procedure. They did get the Novocaine in the bone, but they did not get the cement. Both groups of patients were recovered and sent to the, to, to the, the outpatient area for discharge. We did not tell either group of patients what procedure they had had. We followed them very closely, up to, at 72 hours, 7 days, 14 days, 30 days, up to a year. The results that we published recently were up to three months. We don't have all the one-year data yet. And we looked at features that are most important to the patient, including pain and degree of dysfunction from that pain. Those were what we call the primary or most important outcomes. The results of this study are shocking to most people, surprising to me. We found in both groups equivalent improvement in pain, equivalent improvement in quality of life, 
equivalent improvement in dysfunction related to their back. And this was at every time point, three days, seven days, 14 days, one month. So at every time point, patients were better. Even the patients in the control arm had immediate pain relief. This was very surprising to us. I think the message I want to get across to everybody is that we need to focus on one person, and that's the patient. We need to focus on the patient. Let's understand what's going on with this procedure. Let's try to understand why people get better after the procedure. Again, we didn't say that the procedure doesn't work. We said it does work like every other study said it does work. Our patients got better too. The strange thing is they got better with or without cement. What does that mean? Well, it could be that we simply enrolled the wrong type of patient, that the patient that we put in the trial is not really representative of the patient being treated out there today. Patient selection is, is important, and like any clinical trial, it, our results only apply to the type of patient we selected. Now, I think we selected patients that are representative of what's going on in the country. If you look at the numbers of augmentation procedures done, if you combine vertebral and kyphoplasty, industry estimates are that up to 175,000 of these procedures are done a year. Now, there's only 700,000 fractures in, in the U.S., many of which are not symptomatic. It means we're currently treating a very high proportion of patients with fractures. And we know that four out of five fractures without treatment will heal by four to six weeks. So I think the onus is on us as practitioners to identify the patients who will not benefit from conservative management, who will benefit from our procedure before we continue on with the status quo. Let's ask ourselves the hard questions. Let's do the really hard research to benefit patients in the long run.